So I've been doing YouTube for about five years on motorhomes and I feel like I've done this video several times before so apologies if I've got a bit of deja vu because I must have mentioned this before but I guess if you're new to motorhomes you might not actually realize that you can use the heating whilst you're driving. I'm talking about the heating in the caravan part of the motor caravan or the motorhome as it's more commonly known as uh, whilst you're going along. Uh, and it's particularly important now you're into December and it's getting cold, it's been pretty cold recently and you might find that the heating at the front of the van might just keep your toes warm but what about the rest of the motorhome? So we have the Audi 3020 heating system and that is a wet radiator system so we've got radiators all around the motorhome and when it's on and when it's, we're on the electric hookup at the moment it's beautifully warm in here. I actually left this on overnight by mistake and I've just come into it and it's, it's, just, it's just perfect in here, it's really comfortable. It also, it also runs on gas so you can run it either on ele electric 230 volts or on gas and that's very useful obviously when you've not got an electric hookup perhaps you've stopped for the night somewhere on a way, way to somewhere and you can put it on gas. Right, we actually use propane for our gas and propane is better than butane in the winter because butane will stop making gas at a particular temperature so, um, so let's have a look at that. So here we are, this is the Truma Mono Control CS. There is a Duo Control CS which uh, will operate two cylinders and has an automatic changeover. We've got the Mono Control CS, so it is connected to one cylinder. Now this device here is the crash sensor itself and in the event of a collision up to 15 kilometers, I believe it is, 15 kilometers an hour, there's a little ball in there which jumps out of a socket and cuts the gas supply off. If the hose was to get uh, cut, there's a valve here and that stops, that's called a rupture protection valve and that stops the gas escaping as well there. So that's a prerequisite if you're going to be using the heating whilst you're travelling. Right, so turn the gas on and you press that. You hold it for a few seconds. So having switched the gas on outside, what we want to do is we want to be on manual. So switch it on to manual, set the temperature that you want. I'd suggest probably about 16. Because bear in mind, you're going to have the heating on in the cab as well. So you don't want to go too mad. You just really want to keep the van nice and warm and not let it get cold. So switch the gas on put the, the heating onto gas and that's basically it. I wouldn't use the timer because we drain the water down and we've got no water to heat up so you don't really want to be using the timer just use manual, electric off, gas on and obviously water off because we've got no water in the boiler because it's winter and I've not put any water in there You've got radiators behind these sofas. You can feel the heat coming up there. There's radiators in the bedroom and the washroom. And everything will be nice and warm when you arrive. You can switch these taps off. Now the red one there is for the heating. So you don't want to touch that one because obviously the heat will go off. The green one is the oven, hob and grill. So you could turn that one off. Just turn it that way. And that turns the cooker off. Just to prove. Now the fridge, the fridge will run, I've had it off at the moment, the fridge will run automatically either on electric or gas. So if I've still got it on auto, which I'd normally leave it on auto, it should be running. It's connected at the moment, it thinks to electric because I've got the electric connected up. So if I disconnect the electric that should switch over onto gas. So as long as you've left the fridge on auto 
When the electricity is disconnected, the fridge should automatically change over to run in on gas. And that does mean that you can leave the fridge running whilst you're driving. Now when I start the engine, the fridge is going to automatically switch over to running off the engine battery, off the 12 volts from the engine. Now it won't go back onto gas until after 50 minutes have elapsed. Uh, so sometimes people wonder why the fridge won't run on gas and it's normally because there's a safety feature that won't allow the fridge to run on gas if you've just been running the engine. It waits 15 minutes until it can run on gas. The idea of that is if you pull into a filling station, you don't want your fridge uh, starting up on gas uh, because obviously there's danger of spark and petrol fumes and who knows what could happen. So that is a safety feature. So if in case you're worried about leaving the fridge on whilst you're driving, that safety feature is there. You just have to make sure that you're out of the petrol station within 15 minutes. Yeah, so if you put the wrong fuel in your tank and you're there for longer than 15 minutes, you really ought to switch the gas off. Um, and of course you can always switch the, the fridge off gas if you want to. Uh, you can use one of those taps under there and you can just switch the fridge off and it will run on 12 volts whilst the engine's running, as long as you remember to switch it back on again. Just to mention, there is a similar feature for Truma heating as well. I've talked about Alda heating, um, but Truma Combi and Vario heat heaters can run on gas whilst you're driving, obviously as long as you've got the Truma CS fitted to your gas cylinders. Other Truma heaters have got the facility to run on gas, but they will need some special flues to make sure that the flame doesn't get blown out whilst you're driving, so you really need to check with Truma about that. I thought I'd better mention that because I know a lot of people will have Truma heating, but if you've got Truma Combi or Vario heat, it's okay to run on run the heater on gas whilst you're driving if you've got the Truma CS. So that's it for this little video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Uh, let me know if you th think this sort of short video is useful and uh, we'll do some more of it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye then. The Truma Combi and the Truma Variomatic. Very heat Variomatic. <laughs> that's a daft, isn't it? <laughs>